Well, of course, to you. So you to do something a bit different, delving into the archives of the Maiden Back Catalog, and decided to do a review of probably the most sought after, one of the most sought after things for any Die Hard Maiden fan, and that's the Soundhouse tapes, which are brought here. There we go. This one here that I have is, is a repress, not the original. Japanese repress. Uh, white label. But it does me. Found this online second hand a few from me many many years ago. Nice thing about this is, as you can see, it's autographed by Steve Harris who I met at the meeting the after the British Line gig in Glasgow a couple of years ago so we very kindly signed this and it's a beauty it's got all the stuff in the back Information about the band, track listing. So it's a middle number, number 64 of 150. There's only 150 of this uh, pressing that we're on. <coughs> Inside it is a reprint of the first album tour with the tour dates. And when I look at it, they played two dates in, Gla in Scotland on that tour in June 1980. At 12th, they played Dun Dundee Caird Hall, and in Glasgow, they played the Apollo. So, nice we had thing, all tour dates on it. <coughs> now, this was recorded at the tail end of 1978 at Space World Studios in England and it comprised of the lineup of Steve Harris, bass guitar, Dave Murray on uh, lead guitar Doug Sampson on drums and Paul Diano on vocals. So it was in the days before they had two guitarists. They recorded, they recorded a few tracks and they couldn't afford to pay the money for the tapes. So they came back a week later to pay for the, to get the money for the tapes and pay for them. When they got back, the studio, most of the tapes are in white, so the stuff that was left was what well, went on to this. Named the sound house after the residence that they had at Neil Kay's heavy metal sound house disco in North London at the, the old uh, bandwagon, as far as I know. So, <coughs> in his club, they had a, a sort of weekly chart thing or monthly chart thing of demos of bands because Neil Kay was getting all these demos and got handed in from members of the band who were at the club and he'd play, he listen to them and play them and depending who it was, he'd get a good, good crowd reaction. And the top of the chart, more often, it was Iron Maiden. And this was in the days when they were unknown, they weren't even signed. So we're building up a sort of grassroots underground fall in the early days of the no album scene. Bear in mind that the punk scene was still on the go at this time. And one of that a guy that was a regular 
at the heavy metal bandwagon. There's this guy here. I don't know if you can see it. Rob Linhouse. What ever happened to him? Is he still alive? Or is he dead? Or well, somebody could let me know if he's still living. Be interesting because there's nobody's heard anything from him for years. Anyway. This is pressed on Rock Hard Records, 1979. There was 5,000 of them pressed and they were sold exclusively at gigs. And it became an instant collector's item. According to some information I was told a couple of years ago, in the vault in Steve Harris's mansion, somewhere in Essex, he has many original copies of the Soundhouse tapes, unsold, boxes of them, according to information I was told. Whether there's any truth about that, I don't know. But that's what I was told because they've actually been in his mansion. Anyway, as far as the sort of collector's point of view, this will cost you a lot of money. An original pressing of this in mint condition you'll pay anything from £600 up to £2,000 to own this EP. It has been repressed at least 60 times since its original release. It's also been repressed on CD twice. Once as a a bootleg with uh, the Strata, a Stratus album added to it and it was a, released as a slimline CD in Canada several years ago, it's a limited edition thing that you had you got tokens with uh, reissued CD albums and you send it away the tokens and you got this Sunline CD pressing of Soundhouse tapes. Again, very collectible and very expensive because it's all limited on. But anyway, it's a rather nice item to have. I'm not going to bother looking for the original, but as I said, it's too expensive and I can't afford it. This does me, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. There'll be plenty more, and I thought this would be a nice one for fans and collectors of Iron Maiden. Feel free to comment, and uh, also if you want to subscribe, you're very welcome to do so. And thanks very much for the, the continued support from those who do subscribe. And thanks for watching and there will be another video very soon. I'll see you, see you later.